table. Chad taking game one as we look at our second one, and he's got a good board going for the second one. He has two prized amalgams, three blood ghasts. Over on Dylan Hand's side, we do have Thalia's lieutenant and champion of the parish. I want to say that's the judge promo Gaddock Teague in the ranks. It does. Turns off Conflagrate. Yeah, even when flashed back, it's still an X spell, right? So we right. can't, cannot cast. Reflector Mage is going to be cast by Dylan Hand. And before that's in play, it looks like Dark Blast will take care of Thalia's lieutenant. Hand set up with pretty good blockers now. Champion of the Parish up to a 4-4, so it can get just check the prized amalgam. Reflector Mage, really easy block on Blood Ghasts. The Dark Blast changes things a little bit. Would imagine that yeah. Harney dredges that one. All right, so with pretty sizable grip. It's a swing of six. He'll go to 11. Two Narc Amoeba, Conflagrate in hand. Okay, so this Gaddock Teague is doing work. Let's see Dark Blast mills over another Conflagrate. Yeah, not ideal. Yeah, now over the next two turns, if he can survive to it, he can actually set up a Dark Blast that would remove Gaddock Teague. If he has a second black mana. You're right. With only the mana Confluence, that play is not available. Yeah, so the play you're talking about is in your upkeep, Dark Blast, your 2-2 creature, Dredge, Dark Blast for my draw step, Dark Blast it again. But you got to be able to cast it twice on the same turn. And as he can't, Chad will go the opposite route. He will just attack. Here's a swing for nine. And this game seems to have largely just shaped up to be a straight damage race. And it looks like Hand is prioritizing cracking back. Just taking the full nine down to seven. It makes more sense, you know, when Harney can't conflagrate. Yeah. And that Dark Blast is doing work. Normally Dylan would have a free block on a Blood Gas with that Reflector Mage, but he knows that Dark Blast is there. Right. And unless there's an additional blocker, Hand is a setup that's lethal with a Thalia's Lieutenant. He's currently attacking for eight, and he would get to double pump the Champion and pump the Reflector Mage. That'd be 11. Cannot cast that prized Amalgam. It was reflected last turn. Now Chad can cast Narc Amoeba, but if he does, he goes down, he takes a damage, and he loses that Dark Blast ability. Right. And he also can't cast Prize Amalgam because he only produce one of its two colors. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a good reason, too. Right. Pretty pretty bad mana trouble for Harney. We've kind of seen that happen with Dredge decks this weekend. Another Reflector Mage on this Narc Amoeba would be a big turn for hand. As with humans, when it comes to producing another copy of something, one you already have on the battlefield, you get more draws to that when it comes to Phantasmal Image. Back on Dylan's side. First question is whether or not he can assemble lethal. Looks like the answer is no. He makes Champion of the Parish. So now that he can't assemble lethal, the question is can he defend? Champion of the Parish becomes a 5-5. Five -five. He has some creatures that he really does not care about blocking with. Even if he loses them, it won't be a big deal here as long as he gets to apply some pressure with the attack. And this is huge. Reflector Mage copies, or Phantasmal Mage copies Reflector Mage and bounces the Narc Amiibo. This is just lethal, right? Yeah, yeah because of the oh, okay. uh, Confluence was activated. That is a lethal attack. We're going to game three. Yeah, swing for 10. So Dylan Hand going to even things up. We covered Dylan Hand recently. I guess he was on in the tournament last weekend. He had Anna Fenzas in his side, sideboard. He yeah. actually has those in the main deck this week. Two All Anna right. Fenzas foremost. Still capable of losing game ones, as you saw. But uh, he's also <laughs> boarding in three Tormod's Crips. And two is the Static Casters. He is showing a lot of respect for this matchup. Yes. And it, it makes sense. This deck is, has been very popular and putting up pretty solid results. Yeah, now on Chad Harney's side, there's 
not as much he can do about the matchup. I mean, we've seen actually a second Dark Blast in the main, not just one. That's certainly on the higher end of things here. Yeah. He has three Lightning Axes. That'll be helpful against those Anafenzas. And a pair of Assassin's Trophy, which figures to be pretty good in really every matchup for Dredge. Yeah. The three three copies of Lightning Axe in the sideboard as well for, for additional removal. Yeah, one of those to clean up that Gaddic Teague would have been really nice in that game so you could actually conflagrate. Both these players having a great weekend at in Dallas, both were at the Open. Chad Harney finishing in 11th place with Dredge. And Dylan Hand in 29th. So both top 32 finishes, both 4-0 this weekend. Yeah. Yeah, Hand has been putting up really good results on the tour. He started, decided to really take Magic seriously, and it's been working out for him so far. You see he's number seven on our leaderboard. Handful of top eights already. It does, yeah. All the way up to seventh here. Yeah, that, enough to get him the second buy moving forward. Looks like on Chad Harney, after that 11th place finish, running back the exact 75 from last weekend. Don't mess with success. It was a great deck last weekend. Yeah. He's already packing the counter hate measures. Now, the, the difference is going to be he'll probably play against more hate this weekend. But we talked to players that play a lot of dredge. Ross Merriam, who has uh, written kind of at length about dredge for StarCityGames.com, likes to mention that a lot of decks are just significantly unfavored in game one against dredge. And at a point where your game ones are so good, even if your opponent's packing somewhere in the order of four sideboard cards, there's a really reasonable chance that you either just have the answer, you know, you Assassin's Trophy their ley line, or you just play one sideboard game where their hate just doesn't show up. You only have so many cards. Yeah. On Dylan's side, there's actually a lot of rearranging in his deck list after last weekend. So last weekend he was on a Mayor of Averbrook style humans deck with a lot of different creature options in the sideboard. As you mentioned, switching over to these Anafenzas in the main deck this weekend, no mayors. And then actually dropping a lot of, like, to make room for Termod's Crypts and Damping Spheres, dropping a lot out of his sideboard. No Oriok Champions, kind of giving away the dredge matchup, and shaving on cards like Sin Collector as well. Chad on the play here for game number three. We will get things started. Faithless Looting will discard a prized amalgam and a life from the loan. Pretty reasonable start. Yeah. Check on Tormod's Crypt from Dylan. It does not happen, so he'll just make champion of the parish. And Chad took a natural draw as opposed to dredging there. Ooh, and I think he, hit? he drew his second land. <laughs> That's so aggressive. I mean, well done. Well, I mean... The keep was Faithless Looting. Oh, yeah, yeah. So he had a lot of it's looks at the second land, but he, he did find it on the last <laughs> possible draw. <laughs> and we've seen this play out. Here is Thalia. And get, this happened round one. We saw Jake Humphreys versus Emma Handy. And it looks like in response, the Lightning Axe will shoot down the champion of the Parish. And part of the reason for this is Harney has another Lightning Hex in hand already. Okay. Life from the Loam will be dredged, finds Dark Blast and Blood Ghast. Santa's Assassin's Trophy, Life from the Loam, Lightning Axe, Conflagrate. Not too bad. Given that he milled over the Dark Blast there, yeah. I imagine that he wants to try to kill the Thalia with that, so he'll wait here. In particular, lets him save the Lightning Axe in, 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 in case of hand producing, say, Anna Fens of the Foremost on this turn. Yeah, I, I'm interested because that. I agree. At the same time, that's moving really slow. That means he doesn't spend his mana this turn. And I'd like to cast Life from the Loam at some point. Gaddick Teague here from Dylan. And you will see whether he just chooses to untap here or whether this earns his Lightning Axe. It looks like he will Axe on 
Okay, I like this. On Gaddock T, discarding the Conflagrate, and then I think the Dark yep. Blast now can finish off Thalia. Yeah, I think that's a plan. Unless the creature was really <laughs> poor, he was going to Lightning X something. That this is, is drain a good dredge. Drain you for six. This is fair. Two Creeping Chills and the Prize Amalgam. <laughs> this Creeping Chill card's a nice one. Don't even have to cast it. Just free through Thalia. Yeah. Chad hits, knocks down to 20 on this attack. Champion of the Parish from Dylan, no more lands, and now Dark Blast takes care of the 2-1, and things are looking Chad's way. And reasonable chance that Dark Blast takes care of the 1-1 as well. Yeah. He'll dredge Dark Blast. And he's already dredged Life from the Loam, right? So he can just do both this turn? I believe so. Mills over another land there in Snow-Covered Mountain. A lot to like here. He'll just pass. He does have Assassin's Trophy up. Mantis Rider. We'll see Dark Blast in response. Chad will go to 17. That is so gross that this attack's only putting him to 17. <laughs> yeah. That double creeping chill is that's just filthy. Oh, how about a third one? Not bad. Back to 20. <laughs> my my deck is racing your creature. 20 to 8, I have not attacked you at all. <laughs> and, and you know, this is why we didn't loam last turn, Ryan. There were only two lands in the graveyard last turn. We had to wait till we'd milled a third land. Yeah, you're just missing on value. And so now he loans back all three. Plays Copperline Gorge. That will trigger get back some blood ghasts. Yeah, the, the issue was there was no black land, so he oh. couldn't have lifed into Dark Blast. The blood ghasts have haste because, you know, creep. <laughs> creeping chill. Oh, yeah, and there's some amalgams hanging D out, too. Dylan down to six. Delayed trigger on two prized amalgams. Did, I, did I mention the conflagrate in the graveyard? <laughs> creeping this chill's is, messed up. This is looking really good for Harney. Even if Hand has Tormod's Crypt this turn, he already just has so much. Well, he started the game at 11. Yeah. Bloodgast, that, that less than 10 life clause is really good when your opponent starts at 11. You know, they printed so much stuff in Guilds of Ravnica that specifically checks for when you surveil. But then they added this one card, like, you can't get back your blood operative if right. you stretch over it. But, like, Creeping Chill, hey, what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. A Chad will go down to 14 as two Mantis Riders swing on in. In order to downside, four cards in hand. You mentioned that Conflagrate. I think if there were enough lands, he could just loam Conflagrate for the win here. I'm pretty sure he has a... Oh, how about the fourth chill? Uh, oh. The fourth chill. Okay, that's too much. Sorry, that turtles, 32 to 8. <laughs> Let's see, can my Conflagrate deck, deck deal 8 to you? Hold, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> what a... Oh, my... How about that trench deck? Yeah. All right. I see why everyone likes playing this one.